Here we're going to sensitize paper for cyanotype printing. There's two solutions involved, A, ferric ammonium citrate, and B, potassium ferrocyanide. To, make, to print a 4x5 negative, we'll want about 10 drops of each chemical. Here's our 10 drops of solution A, and 10 drops of solution B. And once they're mixed, we swish them around a little bit, grab a sheet of paper, and what we're going to do is pour this puddle in the center of the paper and then push it around with the brush. You don't really get the brush saturated. You use it more like um, cleaning up a spill with a broom. So here's our puddle. And some people like to mark off the area that they want to sensitize so they know that it's large enough for 4x5 but I always think it's pretty easy to guess and what we're doing here is just pushing the solution around back and forth and we want to get this as even as possible because in the darker areas of the image you will see streaks if it isn't even Okay. So once we are satisfied that we have that spread out, we just hang it up here to dry. And it's if, a fan, if the little fan is turned on in here, uh, it's usually dry within 10 minutes. So here I sensitized four sheets of paper and I have the fan set up to get it to dry faster. Next, we want to um, clean off the brush and rinse out our beaker. The beaker needs to be rinsed four times. And just set aside the dry. The brush you want to use hot water. It takes a while to get. And then fully saturate it. And then tap it on the edge of the sink. Do that three times. When you hang up the brush to dry, you want to make sure that it has a nice shape. And you never want to use a wet brush when you're sensitizing, so we usually try to have at least two around, so there's always a dry one on hand. The cyanotype coating process can be done in the normal white light that we have in this room but I would recommend turning it off um, while the paper is drying. The paper I'm using here is a bristle. Um, almost any bristle with a smooth surface works good for cyanotype. And there's two different ways to go about exposing these. One is using the indoor exposure unit and one, the other one is using the sun. For both, I recommend using this clear tape to position the negatives. I usually put it on two sides. The tape allows you to just lift up the negative and see how the image is printing out because this actually prints while it exposes. And now we're going to put it in the con. So this one's going to go out in the sun. Well, you can't say sun today because it's a rainy day. So what we first do is put the negative against the glass and then it's important on these frames to have a piece of paper in between the paper you're using and the back of the frame because otherwise you end up with stains and streaks and stuff. And you just turn these little springs, hold that in place. It's quite a bit like doing a um, contact proof sheet but um, these frames have a little tighter tension. Here I have a second negative taped to a piece of paper, sensitized paper. First thing we want to do is make sure this thing's plugged in. It either has to be plugged in 
into the darkroom area or into one of the yellow cords and place this in the center and lower the glass, turn on the power, and then uh, the first thing we do is hit the vacuum button. And right now there's a slight leak. It really should be going up higher than this. But that's probably enough tension to make a print right now. So I'll need to work on that. All right, so next we dial in an exposure. Let's start out at about 200. which is an average for a thinner negative. And then we hit start, and the light comes on, and it'll take a while for this to expose. Okay, so here we applied our 200 units. I'm gonna turn off the vacuum, lift up the glass, and take a peek at this. So this is fairly well printed out. Um, what you want to be, the deepest blue should have turned white, uh, which it has here. And probably like this area, which is a window, will completely wash out. All right, now we're gonna check this one. That was out, actually got rained on. It's out there for about a half hour. That's fairly thick negative, so it might not be done yet. Let's take a look. Not nearly done. Uh, here, uh, if we'd want that to have, a, after it's washed, to have about this density, it would take um, another hour, really. Uh, so, yeah, not a good day for outdoor exposing. All there is to processing a cyanotype is washing it in water. So I'm in the back dark room here and slip the paper in and slash it around a little. And you'll notice that the highlights wash out first. And then as it's in the water, the shadows will become deep blue. And it'll continue getting darker as it dries for about one day. This one seems like it was exposed pretty well. Usually you want to wash them, depending on how thick the paper is. The thicker paper you want to wash for a couple minutes. This is fairly thin bristle paper, so about one minute, correct. If you wash it too much, the image is gonna bleach out. So here this is done washing when the blue is fairly even in the border and the clear area of the negative. Um, to dry the cyanotype, just hang it up on a line. Uh, it's important that they don't get any heat in the drying process because that will also fade them.